Hey fam, how y'all doing? It's Monday. Come on in here. <laughs> it's been a while since I had one of these rare video talks on YouTube and today is one of them. I felt like, you know what? I should record what I currently feel and what I've currently been experiencing lately. So let me start off with first, I had a wonderful weekend. I went out of town to visit two of my favorite uncles. Actually, three of them were there. Um, there are my mother's brothers on my mother's side. And one of my little cousins, who happens to be one of my uncle's uh, youngest sons, actually was in town as well. And he happened to turn around for wherever he was at and come down and see me and say hello. We had a good old time in the country. They, they in a the little old town. It's called Industry Texas. It's like 300 people small. And it's like uh, between some other little towns outside the Houston area. It's, a, it's out the, outside the Houston region. And it's about a good four hours away from Dallas where I'm currently at. But anyway, um, I spent the night at one of my uncle's houses and uh, saw my aunt who happens to be a white woman. And uh, she wasn't feeling too well. And I haven't seen her in a long time either. It's been a while. But um, I had a good time. You know, we were catching up and stuff. And I met my uncle's neighbors for the first time. They happened to be white people as well. And they were cool because I asked my other uncle, I said, um, are you sure it's safe for me to cross these white people's land? No offense to the white folks. But when you cross the white folks' land in the country versus the city, it's a whole nother story. If they don't know you, they could just pull out a shotgun and, and pop your ass. <laughs> because racism is real in the South, and you have to be very careful wherever you travel. But anyway, I come on here today to tell y'all that isolation is real. What do I mean by that? Isolation is so real that your own family seems to isolate themselves from you. Why? I don't know. Um, let me give you a quick little revelation <laughs> and an awakening. I had an awakening for real. So the same weekend I visited my uncles and my cousin in the country, kicking it, having a good old country time. Um, was the very same weekend that my brother, who happens to be my oldest sibling, I only have two siblings, one brother... <laughs> One brother, one sister, excuse me. And I believe he's like about to be 47 this year. I don't know. He's old. He's about to be 50. <laughs> if he watches this video, I'm sorry, but I'm going to talk my shit. <laughs> if anybody else watches this video, sorry, but not sorry. I'm about to speak some real truth and some real facts and some real feelings. And some of y'all's feelings might get hurt after you watch this video. So anyway, my brother who happened to be coming up here to Dallas, actually texted me. Now, I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. My family is not as close as other family members, but, and I know a lot of families may not get along very well. However, they don't call. They don't text. So when my brother texted me out of the blue, and mind you, he never calls me. He never texts me. I thought somebody died. I'll be honest. I thought somebody died. Um, <laughs> so anyway, he says, good morning. He goes, me and dad are probably going to take a trip up to a little town called Ovilla, Texas, which is like south of Dallas to go check out Reverend Frank's son's barbecue shack. It's a family friend of the family, I guess. He's not related to us. At first I thought it was a cousin, but he's not. Um, he was just like, you should come out and, you know, join us for lunch if you're in town. He asked me, like, can you come join us for lunch? And I said, I'll let you know if I can make it or not, because that is a drive. It's not close to my home. I'm way up north in a suburb outside of Dallas, <laughs> way far north. And that town where they were going to eat barbecue at in the hood, by the way, it's not a pretty area, is like an hour south of me. So you want me to drive an hour south to go meet y'all for barbecue and Negroes in the hood. But you're driving four hours from the Houston area to pick up my dad to just eat barbecue because one of your 
friends invited you to come out and eat barbecue four hours away. Okay. <laughs> That's how delusional my brother is. I hate to say it, but he's a little delulu. Anyway, um, the next morning I got up at 5 a.m. so I could donate plasma at the plasma center. And that's another reason why I've been very MIA recently on my channel. Um, the struggle has been real. I'm not proud of it. But yes, I've donated plasma for the very first time in my life. I'm not ashamed of it. However, times are hard. And you see, times are very hard when you're donating plasma. It's not fun. Uh, a lot of people are ashamed to admit it, that they need money. And I'm one of them. Um, I bust my ass before I ask somebody for a fucking dollar. I'll tell you that. I don't beg a motherfucker for shit. I work hard for mine. I serve this country honorably in the military. In the late 2000s, right after high school, I get, you know, a few little incentives besides, you know, VA benefits and all that good stuff. Um, but I still work my ass off. I still bust my ass out here, nine to five. I don't work a job at the moment, but as I'm in between jobs and as I'm interviewing, I do a lot of side hustles. I do Uber, I do Lyft. Sometimes it depends, but I may even signed up for a little, you know, contract gigs, you know, like, I don't know, bartending, serving. I do whatever to make the money flow. So I get the bills paid. That's the point. Anyway, you see where I'm coming from. So back to my brother. So when I texted him the following morning after he invited me to eat barbecue with Negroes who I don't know in the hood of South Dallas, I said, hey, bro, good morning. Um, I noticed that Ovilla is actually an hour away from my home. Uh, my doctor specified that it would not be safe for me to drive after I donate this plasma this morning, because they took a lot of plasma on Friday morning. And I was feeling very weak. I felt very nauseous. I actually vomited when I was at the plasma center. It was not fun. And my heart rate was elevated and my blood pressure dropped. Like I felt really hot because the first arm, my right arm, where they started at first when they drew the blood to get the plasma, my vein began to collapse is how they put it. And it wasn't getting any oxygen or blood flow to finish the plasma. So to get the other liter of blood and plasma from me, um, they take a thousand milliliters of plasma from your body, by the way, at these plasma centers. So I would think twice before you go to these plasma centers because I damn sure ain't bringing my black ass back because I thought I was going to die. Seriously. Anyway, they did the other arm to finish the rest of my plasma donation. By the time they finished, and I sat in that chair for two hours waiting for a liter of plasma and a liter of blood to fill up that machine, I got real hot and I told the nurse, I said, hey, I don't feel good. I'm feeling really hot. I'm feeling really dizzy. I feel like I'm going to get sick. She gave me a puke bag. I got sick. She said, oh, that's normal. They're fanning me, trying to cool my body off, giving me ice packs and stuff. And I said, okay, whatever. So then after I cooled off, they monitored me for a little bit. They let me go. I was able to drive, but I took my black ass home because I was only 15 minutes away. And that's another reason why I did not want to go south because I didn't want to end up having a car wreck because of all the blood and the plasma I lost Friday morning at nine o'clock in the morning. And I didn't get out of there till noon, literally. It took that long to donate plasma and I was pissed off. Anyway. Back to my brother. So my brother responded with, okay, and he didn't say nothing. And so I'm assuming, okay, maybe they're not coming. I didn't hear from my brother all day. He didn't say a damn thing on Friday because that was the day they were supposed to take their road trip to go to the barbecue place in the hood. Again, it's in the hood. So the following day, since I assumed they weren't in town, I felt better after I was well rested, after, you know, weaned off the plasma donation. I got up, I said, you know what? I'm gonna take a nice little road trip. Get me a nice little car rental from Two Row. I rented me a nice badass drop top convertible Mustang. Um, it was a 5.0, 460 horsepower uh, V8 engine. Yes, I know cars very well, by the way. <laughs> um, 
very fast. It went from zero to 80 in 30 seconds. It was fun. It was a fun toy. Anyway, uh, I got that rental for as low as $75. So in case you want a badass car rental, a sports car, a luxury car, a Mercedes, a G-Wagon, it don't matter what it is, you can get it as low as $100 a day or less on Turo. And that doesn't even include a deposit, zero deposit required. All that requires you to have insurance and your driver's license. That's it. It's like an Airbnb for cars. <laughs> Literally, you're just borrowing the car from the owner. That's the difference. And you can actually have the car delivered to your home or you can have it delivered to the airport. Or you could just pick it up from whatever location they tell you to pick it up from. Anyway, after I got my rental, drove down to the country, said hello to my uncles, chopped it up. While I was down there, one of my uncles, he had said, hey, I saw on Facebook your brother um, Rashad and your, and your dad was in Dallas. It was at some little fancy barbecue spot. I said, what? You talking about? He said, yeah, they went to go eat some barbecue shed. Look, he shows me the pictures. Don't you know this Negro had the audacity to not even call me, okay? Not even say a fucking word the entire day on Friday that he said that he was probably going to come to. Posted pictures on Facebook with my dad eating barbecue. Now, how do you think that makes me feel? Y'all drove four hours from the Houston area to eat barbecue up here in Dallas, and you didn't even bat an eye to at least call to see if you wanted to come through and visit your own sister, your own flesh and blood. My, my father didn't even bother the call to check and say hello to his daughter, your own flesh and blood. That's cool. And I, I'll be honest, I was very heartbroken I, I shed a tear or two, and it made me kind of sad to know that my own family, who I barely see once in a blue moon, by the way, during the holiday season, if I feel like driving four or five hours down to the country to see them, um, didn't bother to see me, nor called my black ass to tell me that they were in town eating barbecue, but posted pictures, old pictures of the food and them having a good old nigga time in the, in the fucking hood. Now, I'm not trying to be salty. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to be a messy boots. All I'm saying is that family isolation is very real. And I just wanted to share that very same experience that I had in case anybody else went through the same situation. Because I feel like in 2024, people are very divided and they're just drifting apart more and more, sadly. And... After I had talked to my uncles and stuff and asked them how they felt about it, they said it was wrong. They agreed. Now, am I going to say what they really said? No. <laughs> it was highly inappropriate. But they were drunk and it was a spur of the moment. I I'll be honest. One of them just said, like, fuck them. <laughs> it was funny as hell. I laughed. He just said, fuck them. <laughs> But I was just like, no, Uncle. I said, no, Uncle Jerry, you can't do that. You can't You can't be mean. You got to be nice. Nah, fuck him. He's an asshole. He's an asshole. He could have called your ass. He was right there. He was only 45 minutes away. Them nigga Rose drove four hours. He barbecue, cheap ass barbecue. Look like fucking pig slop. And they didn't even bother to call your ass. Fuck him. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I just said, fuck it. I'm going to say it. I thought that was hilarious, but... I said, no, uncle, you can't be that way. You can't, they family, you can't be that way. I can't disrespect my elders. I was born and raised not to disrespect my elders. Anyway, that was pretty much the whole story. And I had spoke with an elder mentor of mine, shout out to Miss Yo. <laughs> and I asked her, Miss Yo, what would you do in this type of situation if this happened to you? Knowing that a couple of your relatives, a sibling or whoever, or a family member is in town, drives four hours away to eat barbecue in the hood and doesn't bother to call you, but then turns around and posts pictures of them eating barbecue on Facebook. How would you feel? And she said, well, baby, let me tell you, maybe it was because, you know, your brother and them was tired from the long drive and they didn't want to get back home too late. I said, you know, that could be it. And I forgot to also mention, my brother told me the next morning on Friday, 
this is how I knew he was guilty. Um, or actually Saturday morning, he had texted me and he goes, sorry, we didn't get to make it through yesterday. Dad was tired and we didn't want to get him back home to LaGrange so late. I said, oh, it's okay. I understand. That's all I said. I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't realize he was already here. He just didn't tell me. That's why he texted me that bullshit because he felt guilty after posting all them damn pictures of eating that fucking pig slop. <laughs> but anyway, my elder mentor said, well, baby, maybe you should just call him. Call your call your daddy first and talk to him. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how that made you feel, how they just drove all the way up here and didn't bother to see you. And let them know that that kind of made you feel sad. And see what they say. And then call your brother. Okay, I called my dad, just like she told me. And I told him how I felt. I was very nice to him. I wasn't rude. I wasn't ignorant. And I said, how was the, the barbecue trip? I seen y'all's pictures. Y'all had barbecue down in South Dallas. And he was like, yeah, it, it, was, it was all right. I said, how come y'all didn't bother to swing by? I said, Rashad didn't even tell me y'all were here. He said, I thought he texted you. I said, no. I said, he told me that y'all were probably going to take a road trip on Thursday. He didn't confirm that y'all were actually here Friday. He said, oh, I'm sorry, baby. I figured since you wasn't feeling good, we was going to go back home anyway. We didn't want to bother you. I said, but I told my brother in a text message on Friday morning, since I wasn't able to drive down there because of my plasma donation and how I was feeling, because of how weak I was to get on that road and be in all that traffic down there, I said he was more than welcome to come to my home and visit me. And I gave him my address. So it's not like y'all Negroes didn't have my home address. Plus, I have an elevator in my apartment. It's made like a hotel. It's like a loft apartment. It's very nice and high end. So it's not like you had to worry about climbing stairwells because my dad is low-key crippled. He walks on the cane. And he was just like, oh... I'm sorry, baby. We'll we'll stop by next time we're in town. That's all he said. I'm sorry, baby. We'll stop by next time we're in town. I said, okay, got it. And this is why I keep my distance from certain family members. I hate to say it, but sometimes isolation can be a good thing for your own peace of mind and for their own peace of mind. And I love everybody, but from a distance, because of the way I've been treated and the way that they just nonchalantly just say this shit so carefree and so normal that you could just drive four or five hours to eat some nigga barbecue in the hood and don't even bother to stop by and say hello for 20 minutes or less and then go on your way. Oh, and by the way, the wake and worse, I asked them, what time did y'all get here to eat barbecue? Oh, we got here around noon. So you got your ass up at five, six o'clock in the morning to get on the road to beat traffic, to eat barbecue at by noon when you arrive, and then you turn your ass around and you went right the fuck back home. That's family. That's why I keep my distance. And I said, you know, it's a damn shame when you try to make peace with somebody and you're trying to be respectful about it and this is the thanks you get. And I'm not calling my brother. Sorry, but I'm, I don't want no explanation from him because all he's just going to do is just lie and blow some smoke up my ass. And I don't want to hear that shit. I don't feel like there's a need. I got the answer I needed straight from the horse's mouth. He basically told me, fuck you. We wanted to eat nigga barbecue in the hood and we wanted to bounce. You chose to eat barbecue instead of stopping by to see a family member that you barely see once in a blue moon. That's fine. Yeah, that's family. Mm-hmm. But you expect me to be down there every goddamn holiday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, none of them. And I mean none of them. Talk to me. Unless it's about bad shit. Unless it's very dramatic. Unless somebody is sick. Pookie and Ray Ray in the hospital. Somebody died. There's a funeral. Oh, they'll tell me the funeral details real quick. But there's nothing ever positive. There's nothing ever happy. But when somebody's sick, they want me to drop everything and come down there. Why? But when it's about me and my feelings and how I would like to see somebody 
just for a spare moment. I'm not even asking for you to be here all day. All I asked for you for was a quick visit to say hello, show you my apartment that you've never been to, by the way. And I've been in the Dallas area for two years and none of them have bothered to say hello or stop by and visit. That's the way I feel. That's why I feel isolated. Everyone decided to isolate themselves from me. I isolated myself from them in return. Like I said, it's nothing personal, B. It's just the fact of, it's the principle. You chose to drive four hours to eat barbecue versus saying hello to your baby daughter and your brother's little sister. You chose to eat barbecue and take photos and then you chose to go home without saying hello, without calling me to let you know that y'all were in town. Can we stop by? That's the least you could have done. I'm not asking for much, but that's all. But I'm sorry I kept y'all on here for 20 minutes rambling around and running my mouth. I'm going to get off of here now and get off my soapbox. I just wanted to speak my piece and let y'all know that isolation is very real in 2024. So don't feel that you're alone because nobody wants to make peace with you. Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to interact with you because you have positivity going on in your life and shit is going well, even though really it isn't. My life is a wreck. It's upside down. I donated plasma. I've been busting my ass, busting my tires on this road all over this city, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cent on Uber. Yeah, when I got back from my uncle's yesterday and I turned in that rental, you know what I did? I popped on Lyft and I went out last night and I spent about eight to 10 hours on this freeway, rolling up and down the streets of Dallas, picking up and dropping off people, getting my money back. Because that rental... Yeah, with the mileage fees, I spent a little over $300. I wanted my $300 back. So you damn right, I, I copped on Lyft and I got my $300 back. It took me a while, but I got it back. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I wanted to share. I just wanted to share that, you know, sometimes isolation might be a good thing for you. It may be a sad thing, but it may be a good thing. And I just wanted to share this experience in case anybody else was feeling a certain type of way and they wanted to talk about their experience and share how they felt. By all means, drop what you feel in the comments. Let me know what you think about this video below. Any questions, any concerns, feel free to ask. I'm an open book. As you can see, I'm very raw. I'm very relatable. I'm very real. I have nothing to sugarcoat. And call me a shit talker, call me disobedient if you want to because I'm talking shit about family members, but I have a reason to feel what I feel. So this year, since I didn't go home for the holidays last year, I'm going to put on my big girl panties and suck it up and go down to the house for the holidays and be cordial and cooperate with the very family members who don't say a damn thing to me. Just to be nice, because I didn't go down there last year. Since it's so hard for people who actually were in town to see me 45 minutes away. But you drove four and a half hours to eat barbecue in the hood with niggas I don't know. And then you drove four and a half hours back. That's cool. I'll remember that. Oh, I'll remember that. And don't think for one second that I'm ever gonna forget this. But y'all have a nice day. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too melodramatic or melancholy or whatever you call it, bitter, disturbing, whatever you call it. It's just facts. This is what isolation looks like. And this is why I mind my black owned business and I say to myself, and I solo travel around the world from time to time because nobody wants to be around me. And that's cool. You ain't got to be around me. I don't want the fake bullshit. I don't want the fuckery around me. Keep that shit. Because I'd rather travel alone than be around a motherfucker that don't want to be around me. Period. But y'all have a good day. Take care now. Bye.